Good morning, everybody. It's Midnight and Beyond, welcoming you back to the world of Mario and Luigi Partners in Time. In the last episode, we made it back to Peach's Castle after saving the Yoshi Island from the legendary almighty evil Shroob Yub Shroob Shroob Yub Shroob. It was a guy named Yub, I believe. In this episode, we are going to go back to Egad and give him the morning report. I like how in the Lion King, like, in a remade version for DVD or whatever, they gave Zazu's only, like, 10-second song just singing about the morning report. But, like, I'm gonna give you a morning report, and it's gonna be really important, except not really. I didn't realize I missed a coin block. I don't know why they gave us single coin blocks in this game. When they give us other coin blocks, they have, like, 100 coins in them, so it doesn't really make them a lot of sense. But, whatever, it can't be the classics, I guess. Let's talk to Egad. Oh, hey now, back at last. So you've got your hands on some cobalt star shards, hmm? Two of them. We also have a picture of that toad named Toadbird who drew a prior to his memory being eratified. Hmm, ah. It looks to be a sketch of the shrew princess attacking Princess Peach. Yes, Princess Peach is holding off the alien scourge with the cobalt star, but... As we know, Princess Peach lost the battle, and the star shattered into fragments. How did this all happen? Hmm. Uh, I think that was Egad speaking! That's super awkward! My B! Was the Cobalt Star alone not enough to win the day? Or did this something unexpected and just plain awful happen? Anywho, it hardly matters. You just find those time holes and collect Cobalt Star Shards. Oh, and that reminds me. A new time hole has appeared on the third floor of the castle. Hello. My readings indicate that this particular time hole is a direct link to Peach's castle of old. Unfortunately, that castle's under guard by the shrooms. You boys can't get inside. So it looks like you'll have to just concentrate on gathering cobalt star shards for now. Why would you even tell us about it then? It just makes me want to go up there even more now. Eh, yeah, whatever. So, as per usual, as of right now, since we're just now making it into a tradition, since this is our only, only our second time revisiting the place, uh, now that we talked to Egad, let's go ahead and see what the Toadsworth twins are up to. Buck up, Elder Me! We must be more original if we wish to please the princess! Righto! Off we go! My- my spine! Oh, the pain! How about it, princess? Hmm? We're having a ball now, no? She's too young to understand puns. I dare say this is the oddest thing I've done in life. I kind of wish the older Toadsworth replied being like, Oh, just you wait, buddy. Plenty of other weird things happen later on. Uh, but no, unfortunately we don't get to hear about Toadsworth's secret scandals of the future. Not yet, anyway. Hmm. Oh, no! What's that you say, old bean? You wish to learn our move? <laughs> well, I'd be chuffed to teach you, of course, but Elder Me may have reached his limit. No cause for alarm. I'm right as rain. Absolute rubbish, old bean. You look like you're bristle in your britches. Rally! For the sake of the princess, I will gladly sacrifice this old body. Come, masters. I've dubbed this the bros ball. Why, you ask? Because you are bros, and you form a ball. Thank you for explaining. It's rather rigorous. It requires flexibility, endurance, courage, and a bit of an open mind. Master Mario initiates this particular move, so if you will... Yeah! yeah. Let's get down to brass tacks. Is that like the British version of Let's get down to business? I don't think I'm Let's get down to brass tacks to defeat the crumpets. I don't know. And please, sirs, do keep the jokes to yourselves. Mm, okay, I guess they heard me. First, press R to change Master Mario's icon to the Bros Ball icon. Then press A and you will curl up into a giant ball. Capital, and not at all odd. Guess you can say it's an odd ball. Now then, use the D-pad to roll the ball in the direction you wish to travel. It's quite academic. 
Rolling about like a ball's faster than walking, I should say so. And here's why you'll zip right up them, it's simply brilliant. Have at it, sirs! So we just press R, now we have access to the bro's ball, and the bro, the toads were twist, or whatever it was called back in the old day. And we can just roll up hills super duper easy. Just jump up here, you can't jump with the ball unfortunately. It would be a bouncy ball. Ah, oh, and one other thing, when, you, when you're in ball form, you can roll into low ceilings. If you find your height keeping you from proceeding, try rolling into the ball form, hmm? Oh, what a feeling when you're rolling under the ceiling. Just roll down here, so now we can access a lot smaller places. You'd think we would just get the babies to do it, but apparently not. Absolutely top notch. I trust you'll use this technique to your advantage. I bet this technique would make getting up those long stairs to the viewing platform a snap. I do recall a new time hole appearing on the viewing platform, you know. My advice is that you investigate immediately. Oh, and another thing, this bros ball technique. I've a feeling you might be able to do a more than roll about. Perhaps you could spin things. I concur, and I believe there may have been something on the first floor to test your theory. Yes, that's it. I'm certain you can test your spinning abilities there. Okay, we'll be sure to do that. Do challenge yourselves to innovate, sirs. Use this and other skills creatively. So we got ourselves a new technique. My only complaint with this one is that we can't really use it to fast travel as it was advertised because we can't use it while holding the babies and we sort of need to keep them with us at all times. So if we just want to like run off without them, that's going to bite us in the butt later because either we need to find a, a warp pipe to teleport them back over to us or we need to have them... Uh, walk all the way back on their own, which isn't that quick. So it's not really all that useful in the terms of just being able to fast travel with it. Not that this game has like a lot of backtracking in it or like super long areas or anything like that, but it, when you advertise a fast travel system, I kind of would like to actually use it as a fast travel system, but we unfortunately can't. But whatever, let's go ahead and see if we got any new items here. Uh, we got red peppers, which increase power, and green peppers, which increase defense. Uh, blue peppers increase speed as well. So I, again, don't really ever use these things. I know they would be really helpful to get battles in quicker, or if you just don't want to use mushrooms, then you can use this to just increase defense. I'm personally not going to pick any up because I don't really care. Uh, bros items, we got pocket chumps. That's a new bros item for us. I'll pick up, say... I don't want to spend too much money on items because we still need to buy uh, equips. And trampoline, which is a very fun bros item. We'll get into that a bit later. I'm actually going to buy bros items first just so I make sure I have enough money. Because it'd be very crummy if I spent on items then didn't have enough to buy the actual gear, which is actually important. We got ourselves shell slacks, which is for Luigi and Mario, but it decreases Mario's attack. Uh, but increases demons by a lot. My god. A hardy slacks with a shell plating. It takes courage to wear them in public. <laughs> and then the egg pants. Uh, so like, oh, I remember because I, it's been a while since I recorded. So Luigi, no, Mario, Baby Mario, and Baby Luigi all have the equipable pants or whatever that increase their attack by a ton, but make it so they're very frail. So because of that, it's, we're going to be running into a lot of equipable armor that constantly decreases attack. So it's kind of cool that like this armor that we have can't doesn't need to be replaced for a long period of time. But at the same time, it's kind of lame that, uh, I don't know, we just don't have anything new to buy. I uh, guess Luigi's the only one who's going to benefit from this, because like I said, I'm pretty confident with my abilities of dodging, and I can just heal if I need to. So I will give the uh, shell slacks to Luigi, and that's going to be it for uh, trousers today, I guess. Uh, up next for the badges, we got Cure Badge, which recovers a few HP every turn. That's actually really helpful. Big Pow Badge, with a get a great when using an attack item and temporarily power up. Uh, wait, so what does that mean? Big Pow, get a great when using an attack item and temporarily power up. So if we do an action command right, we increase attack. That actually sounds really stinking cool. Uh, Shroom Badge, which is new. Big Defense Badge, get a great when using an attack and temporarily boost defense so you could raise your offense or defense when uh doing the action commands correctly that's really cool i get it i get it so i think i'm gonna want to buy maybe huh, let me think about this definitely want to buy big pow because i'm all about that high attack power even though i don't like using the red peppers uh big pow i think i'm gonna give that to let me just check my current badges real quick 
Okay, I think I actually am gonna buy some big POW badges. We're gonna get one right here for uh, Mario, my boy Mario. And I was about to one for a little Luigi. I know uh, the EXP badge is nice, but it's only when using items. And I tend to be super stingy with items, so I'm probably not gonna benefit from that as often as I normally would if I was actually someone who used items. A uh, cure badge, recover HP every turn. Kinda wanna give it to the babies, but again, they don't, they're don't they not on their own that often, so there's not really any need for it, I would think. But I don't know, I kinda just wanna have one with me, so I'm gonna get a cure badge and put it out on baby Luigi, because I don't think we really need the salvage badge that much. We've had it since the beginning. Uh, big defense, I don't really think we need it, so I think that's good for now. Selling. Do we need to sell anything? I think we could sell Luigi's old heart pants, right? Or puffy trousers. Branded slacks. So many pants. Uh, I'm gonna sell those. Hopefully, I'll regret this later. Okay, I think we're good for now. And just run on over here and buy ourselves some pocket chumps and trampolines. Those are very fun items, which we will be definitely showing off later, but for now, we are good to go. Down in here, you see this mechanism that we saw way back in the beginning of the game. I think they said something about it before. Got a feeling something terrible's gonna happen. I mean, look, the room's got that eerie gear over there. Yeah, the eerie gear. -y. Bless my spots. So yeah, use the bros ball over here to roll this little mechanism. And... Oh, that's what that does. I'm just so confused about everything. Sharon! I'm so confused. So we're just, oh, we can't even go in there. Yeah, I'm so dumb. Oh, uh, what do you guys say? I can't believe a pipe leading underground appeared here. What, might crawl up? But then again, I don't think anything could, could scare me now. I'm all scared out. Just jump in here then. Okay, I guess this is what we're showing off today. Oh boy, I'm a good let's player, guys. This is the underground area. That place right there, so. Huh. Where does that time hole lead, I wonder? And who is that mysterious figure, I wonder? Hmm. And yeah, you didn't, you, didn't, you weren't seeing things. We are actually fighting Goombas for the first time. It's our first time seeing the regular Mario enemy. So they're actually a little bit more tough than usual. So not much, not by much, but I guess they're here now. If you wanted to see them, you're like, this game is the worst because it doesn't have the classic nostalgia and I need it in my life or whatever. Uh, up here, this is not a very broad area, so I think we could probably get through here fairly quickly. But also, thankfully they have a map, so we don't get lost for a million years like the Kiro Sewers in Super Mario RPG. Because my god, no matter how many times I play that game, I will always get lost in the Kiro Sewers. Forget the stinking Lost Forest Maze, the Kiro Sewers is where I get lost every single playthrough. Uh, so the Goombas are- wow! Okay, they're actually pretty quick. Uh, they're basically like the Shrewblitz from the beginning of the game, except they do more damage, and they're a lot quicker as you can see. Not that difficult. So just keep on going. Uh, we got a block for Luigi, a max mushroom that restores HP by entirety. That was a great sentence. They really don't give you that much experience or coins, so I wouldn't blame you if you don't, if you don't even want to fight them at this point, but I guess it's good to fight them now because the experience is worth more now than it would be later, I guess, even though it is minuscule to begin with. Uh, hey, we got one of these things, one of these doohickeys, so we gotta be quiet and focus. 34, okay. I don't really know what my record is. I think it was 36 or something from before, but I don't know. Uh, nothing else over here, just a bunch of coins and whatnot. I think all the pipes down here. I don't really know what the benefit of having pipes piled on top of each other like this, or maybe that's actually how sewers work. I don't really know. It just looks cool, I suppose. And down here, I actually think the... I know there's something weird about the sewers in this game. Like, they're either... It's either not required to come here at any point throughout the entire game, or... Like, it was advertised that way, but it actually isn't true or something like that. There's some, like, really weird thing about this game that I can't remember. I'm gonna have, to have Teresa give you some fun facts to say as I crawl through here and collect some coinage. It is a good place to get some money in case you somehow don't have enough money in this game. I don't know how that would happen, but whatever. And how come you could dig through the bottom of a metal pipe in that just, uh, one area right there? I don't know. Just go on over here. Uh, it doesn't seem like there's anything else over here. Just, well, we got ourselves another Goomba. Okay, just throw the babies down here. Get some more coinage, presumably. Uh, let's see if we go up here. I really wish I could remember those fun facts. I remember when I found out about it, it was like really fascinating or something like that. Uh, not fascinating or something like that. I don't really know. I really shouldn't be recording now. I do feel really sick, actually, but not really sick. But I just, I feel like 
it's a premonition of tomorrow being super terrible. So I have to ask myself, do I try and sleep right now so that I wake up and I'll like feel a bit better? Or do I just keep on pushing myself to before the sickness really catches on because it's inevitable? I have no idea how that's going to work. Uh, I don't know, like, this, I've noticed that this game in general, like, I feel like I'm not making progress in it, even though that's not true. I don't know, it's just, because the game doesn't have any, like, a uh, real telling of you of how far your progress is, I guess getting the Cobalt Star Shards tells you how your progress is going, but the fact that we got our, uh, first two stolen from us at the beginning of the game was kind of annoying, but, um, I kind of prefer in Paper Mario how they actually have actual chapters that tell you how far, how close you are to the end. Not that, I, like, I'm not having fun with the game where I want to end right now or anything like that, it's just that... It's like sort of misleading as to how far I have to go. I can't really feel the progress I'm making. Maybe that's just my own problem because I'm always wanting to do more than I'm actually doing, or I just feel like I always could be doing more or something like that, even though I only need three more Let's Plays to record and then I'll be good to go until late June. I still am all like, oh, but I could have done this, like, I should be doing this sooner or quicker or anything like that. Or, oh, I need to edit all this stuff now. It doesn't matter that it's all recorded. I need to have, like, stuff for year eight recorded by now. I don't know. It's just. Blah, blah, blah. I could just never be satisfied with the work I made or the progress I made. And I know for other people, it's like out, like outlandish or insane that I would have 10 Let's Plays recorded in advance, but that's how Midnight Beyond Incorporated works. Okay, just went ahead and got rid of all the Goombas on the screen, so we don't have to keep on showing it over and over again. Got that taken care of. And we got ourselves an M block, an Ultra Drop, which is very, very nice. Uh, nothing else around here, so we can just go in here. We saw that mysterious figure crawl into one of these pipes. Doesn't seem like we can find any sort of entryway, though. Uh, perhaps over here? Uh, yes, indeed. We got one right here. Let's see if we can corner this guy. What is his dealio? Just pop up over here. Uh, we got this, which is for the big bros to get. Have them run on over. Speedrunning tactic! I actually used it for once. Probably the only time you'll ever get to use it. Uh, got this one. Unfortunately, I can't speedrun tactic my way over there. Uh, I like how I always say speedrun tactic. I can't just say, say speedrun. I feel like I said that already. God darn it. Like, that's not also the problem like me taking breaks. Even though I record like a million episodes all in one sitting. Then I take like one break, which is like less than a week. And I'm like, oh, did I say this already? I don't even remember. Uh, and beyond. What even are you? Uh, nothing else around here, it seems. So what is over here? Keep on going up. Left. Oh, we went that way already. And that wasn't even left. That was a right. This is another right. And I'm just delaying the inevitable. Nothing else over here. Okay, so we can finally go up here into the secret palace. I have boredom. Guess. Now I have. Fury! I say to you, welcome! Welcome to Fawful's Bean and Badge! In this place, beans are like precious treasure milked from a famous cow made of jewels. All who come with beans leave with badges, so rare they make dis mustaches droop with disbelief. What? The story of Fawful? Your words are not beans. I am not wanting them. You are like brainless cats that are too dumb to know when they are stupid. You have curiosity! But my tail is long, so long it makes babies old and hairy lips grow gray and aging. Do you dare hear? Um, okay. <laughs> no thanks. Okay, sure. And now you listen! I am here, merchant of badges, only sometimes with fury. But I once had a fury at all times! I drizzled rage dressing on the country next door. Rage dressing on a salad of evil! And then the bad men came. Red and green bad men. I had the punishment. Bad punishment with hammers and jumping on my head and the overheat of my ship. I have a little fear even with remembering. Red and green. A pair of jumping hammers and red and green. Oh lord, looking like you. I have fear. Those brothers of badness. My brain aches at their overalls. I have fury and headache now! Fawful wouldn't be here reigning over and all no, laughing at you! But no! So much fury! Stupid mustaches has like the dirty tail of a horse in a barn built by a farmer who is crazy! I have come. I am waiting like an elevator. 
I have the comers. I run Fawful's bean and badge butt. The day comes soon when Fawful rises again, and then no baby's candy has safety. I am counting chickens before they are even eggs. Before the chickens are even chickens. I will have fury. I love a defeat. I fight with rage. I hurt your faces. Did I have insanity? Did I have evil? I suppress the fury, but sometimes the fury has me. Red and green puts the fog of rage in my eyes and my mind goes crazy. But please, I will be fine. No worrying for Fafal. We talk of beans. Beans and badges. We begin trading. What are you wanting? Holy Jesus. Oh my God. I'm going to have fun voice in this guy. So, for those of you in the dark, Fawful was one of the main antagonists of Super Mario, or not Super Mario, Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga, the game before this one. I didn't know this first time playing this because Partners in Time was my first Mario and Luigi game. So, I kind of didn't really care about this Easter egg, I didn't really know what he was talking about, but the truth of it is, he somehow escaped from when we defeated Cacoletta back in the day, and he uh, is now in hiding underneath the Peach's castle. But he's trying to open up a bean shop and sell people things in exchange for beans. But he can't recognize Baby Mario and Baby Luigi for their older selves. So he's going to help his former, uh, former, what's the word? Like, ar former arch nemeses in the process. Like, it's really stinking funny. I completely didn't even get the joke for some playing it. But now that I have played Superstar Saga, I know this character. I think it's very, very funny, and also just everything that he says is absolutely stinking hilarious. Like, that was one of the main reasons why I wanted to Let's Play Mario. I, I, no, I even say Mario Luigi Superstar Saga, but uh, I don't know. I just, I can't really go back to that game and enjoy it to the extent that I can with the newer games, just because every Mario Luigi game has the ability to play as two characters and more, but with Superstar Saga, it's sort of like the base thing. Let's say that Superstar Saga is a bad game. I don't know, it's just that I didn't grow up with it, it was my first one, and considering I played Partners in Time and Bowser's Inside Story before Superstar Saga, it's just really hard to go back to that one and, like, look at it on its own and appreciate it for what it did. If I played it on its own beforehand, I might have, but I don't know, I'm just sort of weird in that way. I'm probably the only one who thinks that, it's a great game, you should definitely play it, especially since it's easy to access now with the 3DS remake, but... Whatever, I guess we have this appearance of Fawful, a beloved character from an old game that I will never let's play. What are you wanting? Uh, we want to trade. He's going to tell us about the beans, basically. Anytime uh, you see one of those X marks on the ground, you dig up a bean and you add it to your collection. In case you're wondering, the bean spot that's next to him behind the, sh behind the shelf, you can never actually access it. I don't know if there's actually a bean in there if you, like, hack the game to get behind the desk or something like that, but... Uh, there's no actual in-game way to get that beam, so don't worry about it. He's just sort of using it as an example. Then again, that does lead to more awful dialogue, so how about we have him tell us about it? The beans hide in the dirts of this country like dirt fish who like to eat dirt for dinner. Bean symbols like this are mark making, marking, 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 marking all bean spots. You are digging in dirt, right? You are digging under symbols, and you are finding much bean. Bean symbols of sneakiness. When the beans are gone, the symbols flee like babies. You are wanting much beans, and then you are hunting symbols and digging and popping. There are even places to win beans in games, maybe. If you get many beans, you get many badges at this place. Fawful's bean and badge. What are you wanting? Trade. Fawful has the best badges in the entire sinking game. So what do we got here? Holy Jesus, there's a lot of second badges. We got the one chance badge. Greatly increase the power of the first attack used in battle. So if we land a first strike on an enemy, then it does a lot of second damage. That's pretty cool. Pummel badge. Possibly defeat enemies when initiating battle with a hammer strike. Uh, kind of cool, but I don't like the fact that you would only be using the babies in that sense because you have to have the, uh, the baby separated from the grown-ups in order to use the hammer. So I probably wouldn't want to use that. Stomp badge, increase damage power when jumping on an enemy to initiate battle. Uh, rough badge, oh wait, so stomp badge, increases damage power when jumping on an enemy to initiate battle. Increase damage power when jumping on an enemy to initiate battle. Stomp 
So like it's sort of like the first strike, but it does more. Not sure how these are different. I might have to look up to see if to just read these more carefully and see what they're all about. Because I don't want to accidentally buy something not useful or not buy something useful. A uh, rough badge greatly increases all damage both given and received. So if you're really good at dodging, then you could uh, get this and just do a bunch of damage to enemies. But if you get hit, then you're going to regret it later. Uh, coin badge A greatly increases coins when received you and you defeat enemies with an attack item. So it's kind of like what we have with the EXP badge, but with coins. And it's greatly increased. Uh, we also have the upgraded EXP badge, EXP badge A, which greatly increases the XP. Treasure badge, defeat enemies with items and get the items they were using. Uh, sort of like the salvage badge, which is but just a more upgraded one. Ulti free badge, no matter how many attack items you use, your stock stays the same. So you only need to buy one attacking item as long as you have this badge equipped. So it saves coin money, which is kind of cool, I guess. I know there's like one of these is like insanely overpowered. I'm not sure which one it is because like... The descriptions aren't super detailed. I might go back to it later. I don't think I want to buy anything right now. Plus, they kind of break the game if I'm remembering correctly. And I think he gets new stuff later. So, uh, I guess we'll just come back here later now that we know about it. I have badges! Such badges! Brain beans! Beans! So, yeah. That was an experience and a half, to say the absolute least. It is really cool that... A former villain actually comes back and like helps you in the end. It's really funny when they have connections to the games like that. I uh, don't think they actually go through this way. Yeah, we just have to walk around this way. Kind of like they have to walk all the way down here whenever you want to talk to Fawful. But ooh, it's not really any problem when we want to talk to Fawful because you get to talk to Fawful. And that's its own reward when you think about it. Just pop up over here. And Mario and Luigi are never going to know about it because they can't speak to the babies. They can't be like, hey, what you find in there? And they'll be like, I don't know. It's a crazy guy. Uh, we head down here. There are more Goombas. Uh, nothing else over here, it seems. Just a dead end of sorts. Okay. And then we go over here. I apologize if, like, this area in this entire episode was, like, very discombobulated. And, like, I didn't seem to know anything. It was, like, the episode of just no intelligence. Like, that's my... That's what I get for not re doing research beforehand. But that's just sort of my... The way I roll, because I don't want to... I don't really want to strive to be the best of the best. I just sort of want to have a fun time with the game and just re-experience stuff that I may not have remembered about it that I really liked or anything like that. And the Goombas respawn for some reason. Uh, yeah, this time hole right here. So what is in this one? This one takes us to... Toad Town. Mushroom Kingdom Pass. Okay, I'm somewhat remembering things. Toad Town is a future area that we will go to later. We can't actually go here right now. I do like when games show you, show you future areas that you can't really visit right now, but as you can see, uh, it's blocked off by a gate that we cannot access because the metal flooring is uh, inaccessible to us. It's just cool that we could go here right now if we wanted to, but it doesn't really do anything in the here and now, so I should just ignore it. But yeah, as I was saying, I sorry that this episode was like super discombobulated. I usually don't want to be this out of the blue or just like not in the know-how when presenting videos or anything like that. So part of me kind of wants to re-record this episode, but I don't know, just sort of like a super awkward romp of weirdness. Then again, if I re-recorded this episode, I would have to like recreate the Fawful voice and I don't think I can recreate that perfection so i think we're just gonna leave it as is uh, we explored the underground sewers we can't actually do anything here it was just sort of if you want to exchange beans for those badges but in case he has any sort of special stock later on i'm going to save them for a while and we will buy them in the future but for now we've gotten pretty much everything done that we can do at this point i don't know where the heck he got is talking about saying that there's this Stinging Timel that leads to Peach's Castle. I wanted to go ahead and show that off because I remember that being a thing that you could see it before the end of the game, but just all of a sudden it isn't where I thought it was. I thought the one upstairs was the one, but it isn't the one. And instead, we are just headed to the next area. I have no idea what the heck is even going on, but whatever. Oh, wait a minute. Wait. Oh, uh, 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 uh. Head this way, maybe. And eventually... 
Looks like we saw the menacing hole. Yeah, that sounds great. There's the menacing hole of death. Yeah, there it is. This is the one that. Yeah, yeah, I see it now. I remember. That's it. That was a very roundabout way of trying to find the stinking hole. This is the one that we can't actually do anything with, but we can go here just for funsies. Princess Peach's castle in the past. This would be Peach's castle of the past. Such devas dev dev devastability, and as I suspected, we are bared entry. Barred entry, whatever. Our best course of action is to seek out the Cobalt Star Shards, I believe. And yeah, that's it. You cannot actually go in here. I just really love it whenever games let you see the final area or the final boss before you actually get to go to the final boss. Like something like Eco or uh, kind of, in a way, Chibi Robo when you think about it, how you get to see Giga Robo early on. But um, yeah, it's just cool that you get to visit this place early on. I'm sorry it took so stinking long because I just cannot navigate a stinking map correctly. And I knew that the menacing hole had, like, the sparks coming out of it. But I just didn't think of it or whatever. But I don't know. I'm just not good at this game, apparently. This game, or this episode, was just all about me trying to find the hole. And I couldn't find the right hole. And I just kept on getting all lost and found in topsy-turvy. And I really wish that game got, like, a re-release or something like that. Just because it's a weird uh, one-off game. And I would like to have it on a modern console. Because a lot of people don't actually know about it. Oh, boy. This game is weird, and now that we are finally done uh, getting lost and we have our bearings straight, we found a lot of holes that we can't do anything in, but now it's time for us to enter a hole that we can do something in. But it took so single long to get to this hole that we're going to end the episode off before we can actually get to the hole. How wonderful, and if you want a speedrunning tactic, you could just leave the babies at the bottom of the stairs and roll up here and then use the warp pipe. But I care deeply about my little babies. I don't want to bend them down there just for the sake of speedrunning. What kind of cruel human being do you think I am? Uh, it's just so stinking slow though. Hurry up and just padding out the episode. Even though we're 40 minute recording, what the fruit did we even do in this episode? Literally nothing happened. This is like an example of how I'm the worst Let's Player of all time, and it's all downhill from here. But next time on Mario & Luigi Partners in Time, we are going to completely forget that any of this ever happened, hopefully. This is Midnight and Beyond, and I will see you all later. Good night.